The first book is titled Motivation and Reinforcement, Turning the Tables on Autism. And this book was first published in 2007, and a later edition was released in 2011. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Um, this okay. is kind of my, my big ABA verbal behavior teaching manual. This was my attempt at taking behavioral principles and translating them uh, into everyday language for parents and teachers of children with uh, a diagnosis to be able to uh, use these techniques to their benefit. So what do you mean by turning the tables on autism? Um, yeah, the reason that, that that's part of my title is because I have a, a firm belief that um, when you have a teaching setting in which you are trying to pull the student to learn from you, where you want them to learn more than they want to learn from you, that you're always going to be at a disadvantage. You're always going to be in a less than optimal situation. That everything we do in our with our behavioral principles is designed to set up a system where the child sees our teaching setting as the oasis as the 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 most fun they could be having all day as the amusement park and so when we're engaged and willing and able to teach and support a child when we have the time to be there with them we want to make sure that we're seen as the most fun they could possibly be having and so everything we do within a behavioral approach is designed to set it up so that the child wants to engage with us even more than we need want to be engaging with them so that they see that there's some responsibility on their part to be a part of this fun and to be able to maintain and have access to all of this wonderful interaction. Uh, therefore, they start seeing the learning aspects of what we're doing as their responsibility, as things they want to be doing because it makes their life better. It, it helps them to move forward. So the really the idea of turning the tables was meant to be this idea of instead of constantly trying to drag a child who's trying to avoid you into teaching, setting up the environment and turning the tables where they're actually begging you or wanting you or trying to engage you to teach them because your teaching is more fun than what they could be doing without it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really what it re 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 replies to or uh, refers to. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be autism in general. I know that the main audience that I was speaking to was children with a diagnosis of autism, but as we know, children with autism are so different from one to the next uh, and there's nothing about behavioral approaches that don't apply for any teaching with any child with any diagnosis or no diagnosis at all. Um, mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily say we're turning the tables on autism itself, but it's meant to be how we turn the tables on the teaching setting so that um, our clients want to engage with us and want to pull learning from us rather than us trying to constantly be pulling it from them. Yeah. Got it. So why do you think this book is really helpful for parents and teachers? Well, I think it, it, for one thing, it does translate and speaks in a language that isn't overly um, weighed down by behavioral speak. Mm. Um, I do use the terminologies like what a child needs and wants and desires and those sort of things. And the examples that I use are all designed to be things that parents can and teachers can uh, relate to. These are things that they've seen and they're trying to achieve. And just to cut in really quick, and that's the biggest feedback I always get from, you know, the German families, that they can just, they can relate to it, to those situations, because he has so many, um, you know, from all you know, his experience, all of those moments, you know, the, the examples he has in there, um, teaching examples. And I think it, that's a big thing that they just can relate to it and to the issues that he is tackling in that book. And I mm -hmm. think everything in the book, um, it, it does come from experience with families. These are things that I've seen and these are things that yeah. we've done and this is the outcomes that, that we've had. And then I bring it back to the principles as to why this works, why this is the way that it is. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons the book has been as successful as it has because it isn't a, a dissertation on behavior analysis. It is written mm -hmm. so that uh, a typical mom uh, or dad uh, in middle America or, you know, in the middle of Russia or in the middle of, um, Germany can read this thing and say, Oh, well, this makes sense. I totally get it. And what I wanted them to get was the aha moment that I got when I first had the behavioral principles explained to me, because it was this aha of, 
oh, I see. It's not, we're not following a strict pattern of this is how we teach. We're just following these basic principles that guide interactions. And I think the and understanding of those basic principles apply in everyday life. It ha doesn't have anything to do with autism. And that's a big aha moment for most of the parents or even professionals we were able to meet so far in Germany and who got to read the book. Yeah, it's not ABA the way that we do it with verbal behavior approach is not designed as an autism fix. It's not designed to remediate or to abolish autism. It's designed to teach and it's designed to identify the best and the most effective ways to teach an individual based on using the principles of behavior as your guide. Uh, and, and because I came into this not as a scientist promoting ABA, but as a teacher looking for the best ways to help my students, uh, I've always had that mentality going in. And I think that served us really well uh, as far as helping me to create a really holistic Uh, family-friendly, uh, child-centered approach to applied behavior analysis. Yeah, that's so important because, you know, I think a lot of behavior analysts can lose people in the jargon and the fancy words, and um, it, we can be helping so many different other areas of life too. Other, you know, other domains outside of, <clears throat> sorry, outside of working with children, autism or not. Yeah. You know, like thinking about the different ways that behavior science can um, can change behavior to benefit the world, like climate change, for example. Like, why are we not tapping into that yeah. as a science? Uh, there's so you know? many governmental yeah. uses for mm -hmm. behavior analysis that, mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully we can really focus on getting ourselves in there. I'm personally focusing more recently on trying to work towards families of typical children who are having challenging behavior and are struggling, mm -hmm. um, not just children with a diagnosis, but um, I yeah. think we'll talk a little bit about that later, maybe. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.